The coward bookmakers don't want you to have any lines, but we don't need them for bold predictions, and we don't want them. Welcome back to Freaky Friday and the Podcast Daily. It's got a lot of names, right? This is a three-name episode. That's Bill Landis, Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward, and we're back with bold predictions. And uh, it's Ohio State, Youngstown State. Get excited, folks. I would have bet money that you would have come through with like a lines. We don't need no stinking lines opening <laughs> for, for this episode. So I'm glad you didn't do that. That's two weeks in a row that you've made a bet <laughs> on what the intro was going to be. I didn't know that this was now something you could gamble on. Yeah. Those are the new bowl predictions. What's oh, How's Austin going to start the show? Barney, are you here? Are you with us? Do you want to participate? Yeah. I got nothing to say. Okay, um, great. I'm just hey, it, it's Ohio State, it's Youngstown State. First time in uh, what 15 years since these two in-state powerhouses have played one another. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a a, a fun game to be a part of. I'm excited for it. Let's there we go. talk about it. There's the Huzzah. juice we're looking for. Huzzah. There we go. <laughs> you want you kick us off? You are just bursting with excitement for this matchup. So give me a bold prediction. You are first four. One, two, three, four. Ohio State passing touchdowns slash receptions by freshman wide receivers against Youngstown State. I'm going to drill down and say that two of them will belong to Colonel Tate, uh, one to Brandon Innes, and one to Bryson Rogers. Four touchdowns to true freshman passing uh, threats in the Ohio State offense. Three of them will happen from Devin Brown, and there you go. How do you want that? that Quadruple freshman ding-dong? Is that enough for you guys? (laughs) That's bold. I love it. It's pretty bold. Who's Uh, the the fourth one from? I believe Ohio State needs to – well, the first one's from Kyle McCord uh, to Carnell Tate in the first quarter. I I really think Ohio State needs to have their starters out of this game by the end of one. I think you should be up like 28 nothing at the end of the first quarter, 24 nothing, something like that. And then you could coast from there. Let's get three quarters of, of depth playing and one quarter of solid, clean football from the starters, and then you move on. I don't disagree. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's it's fireworks early and often. Um, that is one of my predictions as well. It, it is it is receiver centric, and I think they are going to throw the ball quite a bit in this game. It is Marvin Harrison Jr. will have three touchdowns in the first quarter and then not play the rest of the game. Uh, because he doesn't need to. Now, there's, I guess there's danger in this because we did see Marvin in the yellow non-contact jersey coming off the practice field uh, on Wednesday night. Not surprising, as Austin pointed out on the text messages, uh, because he did get dinged up in that game against Indiana. So I guess there's a chance that like maybe he doesn't get a lot of action just because why force it to him? Um, but I do think they want him like in the Blitnikoff conversation and the Heisman Trophy conversation. And the way you do that is by accumulating stats. And I think you can do that rather easily against a team like Youngstown State. So the first three touchdowns of the game will be touchdown receptions to Marvin Harrison Jr. or for Marvin Harrison Jr. You guys are jerks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to have eight receptions in the first quarter and then not play a single other snap for the rest of the game. Um, that's probably the diciest part because I feel like Ohio State is more likely to play the starters throughout the entirety of the first half and then give them a breather, especially in a world where they uh, want to give Devin Brown a, a real look and a real opportunity to show what he can do. He should probably be afforded the chance to throw to Marvin Harrison. So I think that pro- that part is probably uh, more bold in my mind that Marvin won't play in the second quarter or that, and I it's probably because I feel like he shouldn't. But I do think he will convert all of those targets into receptions on Saturday against Youngstown State. And he can do enough work to get back uh, where he belongs on top of the Blitnikoff. Uh, I don't know. His watch list, do they send out a weekly update? They should. It's uh, They should not. Really... Yeah, no, they should. That would be way better than the way that they do it now. Because it wouldn't mean that you had to pick semifinalists in the middle of October. But uh, I, I digress. Marvin Harrison won't play in the second quarter. We'll still have eight catches. Can I digress before we move into the next round of bold peas? Uh, I'm can. begging. This is more of a begging uh, from me for the Ohio State fans who are going to be in the building on Saturday. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful September day. If Ohio State's up 28 nothing at the end of the first quarter, don't leave. Just stay and enjoy the day. Make noise throughout the game. Support this team in their return to Ohio Stadium. 
you know, just you don't have to go anywhere. What else you got to do? The thank you. The Alabama Texas game's not till seven o'clock. You got plenty of time to get home. Thank God Brim Cantori is back with us to let us know I'm how saying. the weather's going to be on Saturday. It's going to be beautiful. Do you see that forecast? <laughs> Sweet. Noise. <laughs> um, the weather is not your prediction, right? Oh, no. That's what I'm going to get right, though. Although it was not supposed to rain here at my home the last two days, and it's poured for 48 straight hours, so that's awesome. Um, so you're sure you're going to be right on Saturday? <laughs> I'm always right about the weather. Um, mm. Let's see. You uh, just said you weren't the last two days because i'm in michigan nothing that is expected happens correctly here um let's see the josh proctor has an interception return for a touchdown in the first quarter for ohio state wow you know he has to catch the ball to do that right you don't think he's gonna drop it that is the challenge but it's gonna be a tip so it's gonna be easier it'll be tipped over the middle by steel chambers or uh or maybe even at the line of the scrimmage by someone like jt tumaloa and then it will float lovingly into Josh Proctor's awaiting hands as opposed to one where he has to grab something that's moving with velocity because I think that's where he struggles. It is hard to grab things moving with velocity. <laughs> well, not really for most football players. That's <laughs> kind of why they play football. But he is <laughs> he is a safety, and he, he he's not there to catch the ball. Uh, well, whether, whether they're footballs or players, like – he doesn't want to catch them. He only wants to annihilate them. Yeah, he struggles with things in motion, generally speaking. <laughs> so I think he will get one that lofts, it, it, it finds its way floating through the ether and lands in his awaiting mitts, and he will return it to the house for six. And Ohio State will get its first defensive touchdown of the year, and people will celebrate. <laughs> hmm. I do think that part will be right. I do think they will celebrate when Ohio State scores. See? Yeah, you're right on it. Um, I don't think that Ohio State is going to run the ball. Uh, I mean, they'll do it, but like not a ton. Like I don't, I don't think we're going to see them make a concerted effort to like ground and pound Youngstown State. Because why would you do that? Uh, but when they do run the ball, I think Trevion Henderson will be particularly effective. I did some research here. I bought some stats to the table. In why? F- because I, I was curious about this more than anything. And so Trevion Henderson has played 22 games, which one is a pretty low number for a guy who's in his third year Uh, Two, in four games against non power five opponents. Trevion has averaged 10.4 yards per carry and has eight touchdowns, which is almost half of his career total. Uh, Uh So I don't think it is a prolific work day for Trevion, but I think he is going to get 10 carries eclipse a hundred yards rushing and rush for three touchdowns. Yeesh. So, how many touchdowns did you say from Robert Harrison in the first quarter? Three. And so, you think Trevion's going to get 10 carries and 100 yards in the first quarter while Marvin Harrison? No, or, I didn't say in the first quarter. Okay. But I'm just lumping it in with my prediction that all the starters will be off the field by the end of the first quarter. So, I'm trying to just piece this together. How yeah, exactly. well, don't, don't lump your stuff in with my stuff. My stuff and your stuff are lumped. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> keep them two triple ding dogs is correct though right that's what you have two triple ding dogs uh that is six six touchdowns i think i i think i predicted nine in my score prediction so we have there's more there's more uh more on the table there three to nothing so that that would be nine <laughs> yeah unless there's just a crap down a field goal <laughs> i hope not that'd be fun uh jaden fielding can earn his scholarship that way chip train him is going to run for a touchdown. He's going to catch a touchdown, and he's going to throw a touchdown oh, for the ultimate sombrero oh, triple ding dong. <laughs> the man can absolutely do everything on the football field. I think he's be sorry, Mitch Rossi. The, your replacement at fullback is wow. now my favorite player to watch of all time. See how fast he just turns on people. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Hey, I said oh. I was sorry. I can't help my feelings. Like, a heart wants what it wants, and that's to watch Chip Trainum do everything on the football field. And if Travis Hunter gets to play both ways, I think Chip Trainum should get to play defense too. I think, can I get some odds, Vegas? Chip Trainum for Heisman. I got to replace my Marvin Harrison bet, and I want Chip, and I want him now. Just one more person to play defense so CJ Hicks doesn't get any snaps. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, you, now we've both done it. Sorry, America. Yowza. 
hey, gross. you wanted me to stop predicting a punt return and look what no, happened, I mean, I, Berm. I, 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 that hasn't happened yet. It's very likely that that's going to happen later in the show. Um, I just, I don't know that Chip can throw a ball. I'm not. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not sure. I've never seen him do it. Like I've watched I have. Luke Montgomery throw a football before, so I know that Luke Montgomery can throw a football like 65 yards and do it with spiral. I have just never seen Chipper really chuck it, you know? Wow. Wow. Mm. We've had open practices, Berm. Come on. Open where every player just gets to play whatever position they want. <laughs> you have never seen him and the running backs, you know, they don't want the monarch. They like to throw balls to each other. And they're beautiful passing running backs. This we're off the rails here. Bill, did you, you see, make a second prediction? Because I feel like I passed yeah, out. Yeah, remember, remember you lumped your stuff in with mine? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey, Austin, who is Chip going to throw the touchdown to? Yeah, drill down. McCord. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. The <This> show. <laughs> the thing is, this show used to have like a veneer of like realism to it. And we've just lost it, and I'm not sure that that's the intent. Um, but hey, here's the deal. Okay, if, what I, if, the point if, Berm if, was if this: Chip Trainum throws a touchdown pass on Saturday. If Chip Trainum throws a touchdown pass on Saturday, I will buy you any hobby box you want from Card Collector Two. Any? <laughs> so yeah, Ryan, Ryan, uh huh, yep, the play that we talked about, we need it tomorrow okay so um you brought up the name cj hicks and i think that it's an interesting name to bring up in this game because i would expect him to play a lot um and i think he's going to have ohio state's second defensive touchdown of the day against youngstown state and i think it's very important that that cj hicks gets this opportunity because for the ohio state coaches they need to see that he can do it in games and and be more consistent and this will give him an opportunity to show that for CJ Hicks, I think he needs to be given an opportunity to do it in a game so that he will be more consistent the rest of the week. Does that make sense? Like he needs like a little bit of a, a pump up to feel like, hey, this is why it's worth busting my butt all week in practice. And I think he's going to get a, uh, maybe it's a fumble recovery. Either way, it's a touchdown for CJ Hicks. And I think he's going to be Ohio State's leading tackler on Saturday with uh, 11 tackles. Ooh, Burn you. You should see this. This helps you. And this is the insight that you can only get on the podcast. His new pure all business haircut this week. Uh oh, he went high and tight, high and tight high yeah. and tight. Yeah, I, I really I think CJ has an opportunity to show, like if you go back to some of the the great Ohio State like athletes, the Ryan Chase years of the world, they didn't get a chance to just go out there and play right away like they had to be sprinkled in even the Raekwon McMillan. Like he wasn't a full-time starter till the end of his, his freshman year when he was putting time with Curtis Grant and athletically Raekwon is not what CJ is. But I think if you just give him a, a little bit of a taste where he can say, Hey, this is what it's, this is what you receive when you do everything that you need to do through the week. And then the coaches can feel validated and say, okay, now we gave him a shot and he went out there and played well. I think that's how you turn this into more playing time down the road. And I, 11 tackles, a touchdown, one way or the other. I don't exactly know. Maybe it's even like a punt block or something for CJ Hicks. But he's going he's gonna to do something special when he's in there. Because he, he's so good athletically that he almost does incredible athletic things by accident, I think. And so um, I think you'll see one of those moments. So Berm is advocating for the just the tip method for CJ Hicks in this game. Mm. And then expecting that Ohio State will love it so much that they oh keep going goodness. all the way for eleven tackles and a touchdown. Did, Is that do I have that? Uh, am I understanding you, you correctly? Are you are you being possessed by the spirit of Bobby Carpenter? Yes, yes, that's what Freaky Friday mm. is for. My you switch, goodness, Jamie you switch bodies. <laughs> I said something during Snap Judgments about this being a family show, and I would like to retract that statement. Oh, um, goodness gracious. Oh, this is a different show. Five fifteen on a mon on a Friday morning. <laughs> Hope everyone's awake. <laughs> Yikes! Okay. I'll be hosting. I'll be hosting the morning juice in forty five minutes. <laughs> well, Can't I'm wait to listen. Good. Yeah, I bet Bob will be real proud of that one. Make sure you tell him. <laughs> I am Bob. It's Freaky Friday. Try and keep up, Berm. 
Oh boy, Bill, what's your next prediction? Uh, that this guy in the tractor outside of my house is going to tear down the electrical lines. Um, Tell the see. people what's going on there. Bill. Yeah, there's can a there's can a, you just a turn it around. Can we see? You, you want to see it? People? Yeah, there's a drive there's a driveway in front of my like right outside my office window. And this guy right here just keeps hitting those power lines, baby. <laughs> and it's going really well. And I am afraid that uh, my house is going to lose power at any moment. So I guess I should I'd make be this more quick. concerned about catching fire than losing power. That's uh, listen. That's also a fair well, point. That's probably a parlay. Like you'd get both of those things. <laughs> yeah, there's people yelling out there. I don't know. I live in a very interesting part of town. Uh, okay, uh, my last prediction is. Um, Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson will combine for four sacks in this game. Um, I don't think that Youngstown State is going to throw it a ton. I looked uh, last year; they played Kentucky. They got shut out. They only threw the ball like, or they dropped back to pass. I should say, I think like twenty five times in that game. Um, I don't think they're going to want to do that against Ohio State because they're just going to want to run the ball and hope they can limit Ohio State's possessions. Would be my guess. But when the opportunities are there to rush the passer, I think Ohio State will do quite well with them. And I thought I saw a lot of juice out of Caden Curry last week, especially in those rushman packages. And Kenyatta Jackson just didn't play much. Um, I think this is probably a game for all the reasons that Byrne laid out about a guy like CJ Hicks. And Kenyatta's in a different spot, right? Because I think Kenyatta is, you know, he's not a starter, but he's part of the plan. But he didn't play a ton. I think he gets uh, an elevated number of snaps this week and makes the most of them combining. With a couple of takedowns in the, of the quarterback in the backfield with his classmate, Caden Curry. Kenyatta starter adjacent. Starter adjacent. Yes. Yeah. Another one of those players that was impacted by Indiana's complete unwillingness to try on offense. He, Kenyatta barely got to play. We did talk about him a lot throughout training camp to Bill's point. Like, there's not any reason to think he's not a big part of the plan against in pass rushing downs, at least, uh, which didn't occur last week. Yep. yep. <laughs> crushed it <laughs> hey um before Octa makes his third and final prediction i'm gonna make a fourth one um <laughs> do you remember the game and when i say the game bill you're gonna know the game from tate martell against Robert. oh yeah 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 perfection <laughs> yeah do i remember perfection yes I i'm expecting and predicting that we will see lincoln keenholz for the first time in his ohio state career on saturday mm -hmm. And he is going to have a 60-yard touchdown run in this game. A what? A 60-yard touchdown run for Lincoln Keenholz, Ohio State's uh, fourth-string quarterback, the South Dakota slinger, the, the peer fear, Lincoln Keenholz. So that's – I'm at – so four receiving touchdowns, two defensive touchdowns, and Lincoln Keen holds touchdown. Is Ohio State going to get ninety this week or what? Hey, that's less touchdown. That's that's only seven touchdowns. That's not that much. Yeah, but there's you know there's there's rushing touchdowns. There's I don't think they have any rushing touchdowns. So that's oh, how I feel. Another about. one. That's a fifth bold B. There you go. Wow. I'm just going to keep throwing them out there. No rushing <laughs> touchdowns. But my my score prediction because I, I uh, you know I don't remember what I said on Monday at Roosters, but I've evolved for sure. Um, 56 to nothing is Austin's prediction, right? So I I could be convinced that you're going to see 52 to nothing. So 52 nothing. Seven touchdowns and a field goal. Hmm. Someone's going to have to double check the math. Feels like Byrne wanted a lot more than that. Why would Lincoln Keenholds be in the game? Because this, this is the only because this is the game. It's only 52. Because this is the game you get a chance to play him. You're not. You're, you you get four free games. You may as well use them. Just put him out there. Let him run around. See what he does. And I, I think that you get more value from playing him in this game than you do Tristan Jebbia. After you give Devin Brown the second and third quarters, I think you let Tristan or uh, Lincoln play the fourth. That's the way I do it. I'm not in charge, but if I were, that's how I do it. There's no value for Tristan Jebbia in this game. There's value for Lincoln Keenholz. You are making a lot of predictions at once. You just said that Devin. Why don't Brown's you just say what you were really thinking? You're making a lot of sense. Which is what you were really thinking. You just said that Devin Brown was going to play both the second and third quarter. Second and third yeah. quarter. Is that what you believe? Yeah. Like entirely? Yeah. So Kyle McCord is going to play one quarter in this game. Remember 19 minutes ago when I said that Ohio State starters are going to be out of the game after the first quarter? You yes, I do remember that, but I did not think then, that you meant that no more like every single one of them. Every single one. Well. 
Well, Maybe except for the offensive line, who I think will play the f- whole first half. I'd give Devin the f- second quarter with the first team offensive line. So like, you I, don't I was believe you just say I'm making a lot of sense. I refuse. I, you are predicting Ryan Day to do a thing that he's literally never done, which is pull the starters early, regardless of what the score is. Someone's got to do it, and that, if if not now, then when? Never, I think is the answer. Well, that's the other option, <laughs> and uh, I am erring on the side of now over never. <sighs> is there okay. anything I've said here that you wouldn't do if you were in charge? But that's think- not the question. <laughs> Yeah, I, well, actually, but, do it. but mm-hmm. yes, I will answer that question. I don't mm-hmm. think that Kyle mm-hmm. McCord can only play one quarter as a first time, first year starter and be ready for Notre Dame. Disagree. Hard pass. <laughs> Sorry. He's got, he's got three quarters next week against Western Kentucky. I, Devin needs reps for second and third quarter, second quarter with the first team offensive line, third quarter with the backup offensive line. Lincoln Keen halts in the fourth quarter, 60 With yards. No offensive run. line. 60, that's why he's going to have a 60 yard touchdown run. It's going to be a scramble. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It's yeah. the best plan anyone's ever heard of. It's the greatest plan. And you know it. So, Austin, what's your third prediction now that I've made seven of them? I, I don't know. You said that I took the show off the rails, and then you did that. Well, I don't know what to do. What I'm proposing is totally sensical and you know it everyone knows it yeah i'm sure that you'd really be looking forward to the following week getting ready for western kentucky if devin brown plays twice as many snaps as kyle mccord on Saturday. i would be absolutely because guess what kyle mccord played 40 times the snaps of devin brown a week ago so it's worth it to me <laughs> okay <laughs> you just keep you just keep denying it but I see Bill nodding his head. I know that he's. I don't. I don't disagree game. that I, I do think that Devin should play more than Kyle in this game, only because he can do it. And why not? Why not use that time? If not now, then when? Okay, fine. I can't change the way you feel any more than you can change the way I feel. That's right. Which is- hey, America! I have a question before Austin gets to his <laughs> third bowl prediction. We had a fairly spirited debate on Thursday morning on our company wide Slack channel about. Uh, the value of Apple company wide, which is such an expensive group of people. people. We run a we run a major business here. Austin has many midday, uh, midweek lunches with local businessmen. We do a lot of business on our company wide Slack channel. That's true. Uh, however, there was a question about cherries versus Apple, uh, specifically in the realm of turnovers. But in the big picture, I need in the comments for this Friday edition of Bold Peas, uh, your preference of apple versus cherry. Okay, thank you. And now, Austin, the floor is yours, and I'll stop talking. Imagine. Just kidding. Here's the thing. I'm I'm, I'm kidding. (laughs) Taking the blandest fruit of all time and then putting it in front of, like, fold over some pretty average pastry. Not a lot of flavor coming from that bread either. Like, you know what? That's what I want. An apple turnover. Give me a break. Mm, Cherries great. absolutely exploding with flavor that you can't stop, you can't contain, and you got to want more. That's why everyone uses cherry to flavor things because it actually has it. And yeah, apples right. there's no are such completely thing. Apple devoid. wood smoked bacon or, yeah, there's cherry smoked bacon. Guess what? There's apple too. Okay. They're versatile. Wow. You really, that 20, was your first argument? Was 75 cherry the same variation. thing as apple? It's it's what? the same your your idea that it's like so much more used or widely spread is just bunk. Have you ever had an apple Coke Zero? Uh yes. I've had an apple and a Coke Zero. Does that count? <laughs> I've had peanuts in a Coke Zero. What is your point? <laughs> Checkmate. Anyway, we need your comments on apples versus cherries. Please tell Austin why he's wrong. Anyway, Austin, your third and final prediction. Let's get to it. The cornerback interception drought is going to end. Denzel Burke, two picks, one for a touchdown, and there will be much rejoicing amongst the BIA uh, gang. I don't know. I don't know what they are. They're just the B. It's such a weird name. Call yourself best in America. It's not an actual like label. It's just an adjective. Mm. I don't know. That's my thoughts on that. Denzel Burke. 
really impressive. Uh, like we spent all offseason talking about the mentality, the work ethic. You still have to actually go out there and prove it in a game. I thought he did with limited opportunities against Indiana. Um, Bill, I think, made a great point earlier on in the week, uh, Tuesday, and in, in talking with Jim Knowles. Like, do you know what the full defense looks like if you haven't faced anything other than a triple option? And is the secondary really back? Like, maybe you can say that the jury is still out. That would be fair. Uh, but all you can do is play who's in front of you and, and defend whatever the other team throws at you. They didn't fall asleep. They didn't get lulled to sleep by the triple option. Denzel Burke uh, made a handful of plays that I, and looked like the healthy, competitive version. Um, I had talked to him after the game on Saturday and was like, do you feel like back to the level you were as a freshman? And he he thought about it for a little bit. And I, 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 sh- I should have written more about this this week, and maybe I still will. But he pushed back on that because he said he's so much better now than he was as a freshman feels that way I was like well I just mean like you get to play healthy and you've you've never been short on confidence but still it's like well I could see where you're coming from on that but everything the way he approaches the game full stop is so much different than two years ago which um, is again something we've hinted at all offseason but I think we'll see some of the cherry fruits of that labor revealed on Saturday (laughs) Bill What's your, I mean, I know from, again, our very deep company-wide Slack yes. channel, um, <laughs> it seemed like you were on Team Apple, but I just yeah. want to get you on record here. I'm absolutely <laughs> on uh, Team Apple. Apple uh, a, hun- a, a honey, a honey crisp apple is more flavorful than any cherry you can get. And also cherries suck because like when you eat them, you have to spit out like half of what yeah. you're eating in the first place. <laughs> You need a new cherry guy, bro. <laughs> Austin's got those pitless cherries. I sure do. In abundance. Oh, hey, God. hey, Berm. You know how they make those famous Manhattans with apples in them? Hmm. Great flavor addition right there. I, the cherry, I don't. It's a garnish, man. It's, it's an afterthought. It's not an even apple. something that. And if you put an apple in it, it would be the feature. You understand the difference? Like what you're talking about is a fruit that is it is designed to be put on top of a milkshake that no it, people take it off and put it on their napkin. If you put an apple in there, people would be like, "Ooh, apple!" and eat it. Liberty orders a milkshake just to get a cherry. That's the best part. That's the silliest mm. thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I disagree with that. <laughs> that's. I mean, I've heard a lot of silly things on this show, but that's probably the silliest. I doubt that very much. I think that's where we have to say goodbye. (laughs) Okay. Thank you so much for uh, preparing for Ohio State and Youngstown State on Saturday with with us on a Freaky Friday Bold Peas episode of the Podcast Daily. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot to get through, but we Saturday morning, the keys about what nine fifteen live on on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Going uh, post game, snap judgments post game, the notebook post game. It's going to be a full Saturday. Yeah. So and then Zach Warren on Sunday. Everything that you've come to expect, even if it's just Youngstown State, you can't take any games for granted, and our coverage won't either. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. We will talk to you again tomorrow. That's Bill and Burr. I'm Austin. See you then.